Okay. I need to disconnect these. What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica. Is this thing on? Okay, it is. I got to make sure, honey. Baby, when we're grinding, I get so excited. Ooh, how I like. Hey, try, but I can't fight it. Oh, you're dancing real close. Yes. You're making it hard for me. Yes. Ooh, it's not so used to say we're dancing like we're naked. Oh, it's almost like we're sexing. Oh, yeah. I used to be my song. Listen. You done did it. Hey, you know what I'm saying? That used to be the song in the club. What, baby, when we're grinding. Hey, I get so excited. <laughs> baby, why you lying? Anyway, so what's going on, y'all? What's up? It's Friday. It's Friday, 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 night at eight. Hey, please don't be too late. Got myself a date. Great, 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 great. Y'all know where that's from? Where is that from? Friday, 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 Friday. <laughs> what's up? This what's going on. We are down here, girl. Y'all got your merch. Protect your energy, girl. Protect it, girl. Protect it. There's another style. I I, I like this style. I don't, I think I'm gonna make the. I think I don't. I don't know. I like it as big as as it is, but I think it's it's time for it. To give it a little boost. We need to give it a little boost. <laughs> give it some boost. I do not need to be rolling up no reefer. I know that much. Baby, when we're grinding. Let's go to the blog. I sponsored the blog. Yes. Now I sponsored the blog. Ooh, how I like. Hey. Uh-uh. Kai Sanat. Is that his name? Kai Sanat. The little munchkin over there, he'd be on Twitch with all the people watching him. Kai Sinat asks Ice Spice to freestyle. Here's how it went. Asking somebody to freestyle in 2024, knowing what you know about the way that hip hop and rap looks, nobody, that the art, that, that level of the art form is not... It's not, not too many people can do it. <laughs> not too many people can do it. I've seen corrupt freestyle a question. He was in an interview. And <laughs> girl, before all of this shit, he was in an interview. And the guy asking him questions, he was rapping the answers to the question. Snoop is another one off the dome. Like, you're like, what? So that's like, to what I've seen lately is people refer to freestyles and then like, they're like reading off of something. And I'm like, freestyle is off the dome period there's no other way to describe it there's no well if you do it on tuesday no freestyle is off the dome give me a beat and go give me a, a girl when we used to be in cyphers at school and when i tell you the people if you knew who the people were in those cyphers girl and they would be rapping and walking up. You would walk up and then they would start rapping about you. That's freestyling, girl. So I don't even know what we about to see with Ice Spice. Because I, I, it's not, girl, not too many people possess that ability is what I was trying to say earlier. Okay, let's hear, let's hear how it goes, girl. She shows her butt. Does her hair like this? But, but, but.
Oh. That's what she did. She turned around. She showed, gave her ass to the camera. Did her hair like this. Shaking her butt. Bent over. Sh shook her butt a little bit more. A little one, two, one, two. That was her freestyle. Like I said. All right, let's see what else is on Hollywood Unlocked since that was the first post that we saw when we got up here. All right, let's see. It was something that I saw earlier. Oh my God, y'all. Did y'all see Tia Kemp and Jonetta going back and forth? First of all, Diva told me about it because, I, you know, I'd I be. I don't mean, girl, until I know. I don't know until I know. Girl, what is going on with this? Did y'all see this mark going across my glasses? I was like, what is going on? Don't tell me. Did I scratch my glasses? It looked like a scratch. Oh, my God. I'm glad I didn't. I was like, what is that going across my eyelids? My eyes. Okay. So, Joe Netta, you know, Netta and Charles, Charles, your lunch is ready or your dinner is ready or something like that. They're a TikTok, popular TikTok sensation. And they've spilled over into, you know, going on television and stuff like that on these hood, like Zeus reality shows or Zeus talk shows and stuff like that. People are inviting them around just to make fun of them, basically. So, Netta went, Netta and Charles went on the auntie show, the auntie podcast or something like that with the demon Tokyo Tony, Carlisa, the dick worshiping Carlisa and Tia Kemp and Tia Kemp. We all know Tia Kemp is Rick Ross's child's mother. And every time Tia Kemp comes down to anything, anytime Rick Ross does anything, Tia Kemp comes down to the internet to remind us how that nigga ain't shit. And when she drags him, the drags. Bro, when I tell you she be snatching his by him by his damn titties. <laughs> she be like, come here, nigga. She and then and then she be making all these faces and stuff like that. It's just funny as hell. So yesterday. Diva told me um, Netta had so many thousand people on her live. And I was like, what was what going on? Because, you know, there's been a lot of discourse around Netta and Charles and how they're moving through the spaces and how people are receiving them and experiencing them and how they're experiencing other people and people have their opinions. People are going to have their opinions. Right. So he was like, it's. 11,000 people was on her live. I was like, what happened? He was like, her and Tia Kemp was going back and forth. I was like, what? So, of course, you know, it was recorded. Baby, when I tell you, I'm about to play this for you right now. I'm about to play it for you because I don't even know why you would mess with Tia Kemp. Now, see... Netta been going back and forth with Craig Stewart, Craig the writer, shout out to Craig and T.S. Madison on their show. They always are going back and forth. So Netta's going back. Oh, the other day she was talking to the black women and um, white women were, what did she say? More smarter, more smarter. And then, so she's been arguing with folks, baby, you pick the right motherfucker. That's why you got to be careful. You got to be Careful, you pick the right one. Girl, so Tia is down to the TikTok wearing Miss Netta out. When I tell you Miss Netta was, they was, Miss Netta was going back and forth at first, but she knew, bitch, she had your ass on the rope. So when I tell you, her ass was on the ropes. Listen, she got to a point where she was just like, I'm just gonna let her talk. You don't have a choice, ma'am. You have no choice but to let her talk. She was like this. Let her talk. And then at one point, Charles, he passes behind Netta to walk out the door. Tia said, uh-uh, Charles, get your pussy ass back over here. I want some of your ass too, Charles and Chew. <laughs> get your ass back over here. 
So I'm gonna let you hear what she, when I tell you she dragged the shit out of Netta, baby. I and I loved every minute of it. And I and Netta was just like, when I said she was what, you know how Kaya got that damn me, what, what, what? Yes, that's how she was. <laughs> baby, wait, you ready? Y'all ready? I I put it on the community page last night because I was like, no, we got to talk about this. Here it is. <laughs> Here it is. Show us in the weight room, man. You have a man with a child. You put it in that thought. You want that bitch? 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 Let me tell your ugly ass. You like your face? You like your face? You like your face? You way back down the line. You like ugly motherfucker. You put his little sister like a nigga like. Clean out of here. You be asking me glasses. And I'm going to call Gillette. I'm calling Gillette to raise the people to get them when you call them. You bet you call them to do your best. I'm calling Mr. Magic Potter. You can talk to that face. You the Buddha. You can talk to that face. You can tell your ugly cantaloupe face. Yeah, you look that bitch. Your shit look like a motherfucking orange when you kill it. All that white shit. You better stop burning your motherfucking face up, bitch. Yeah, yeah, sit back. Sit back. Charcoal match like looking ass brisket back bitch. Let me tell your bad body ass something about your BBL hip. Fuck you, bitch. Get your ass in the hippo shape, motherfucker. You you look like you got on a wet suit, bitch. That you scuba dive in. You ugly smeared face, white walls, black chocolate, Pirelli tire skin looking motherfucker. You I ain't the bitch to play with. You want to be me? Don't you want to be me? Don't you want to be me? Get your bloody booty ass over here, Charleston. Say you got a size 15 shoe, you can only get your, your shoes at some shacks at Walmart. <laughs> I don't even know why I was trying to drink anything. Girl, that's a mess. When I tell you she dragged the shit out of her, bro, I came back to watch this again. Listen, Tia got that mouthpiece. You just got to fight because ain't no winning with an argument with her. Right. I'm calling Gillette. Charleston, chew, chew, I want your pussy ass too. Charleston was like, Charles was like, let me get the fuck up out of here. But you got to watch Charles. When he walked by, he was laughing, girl. Your man was laughing. You, She was still throwing dicks, girl. Because me and my husband, girl, what and what? Girl, what I'm telling you. But keep my husband out of it. They keep my husband, keep my husband out of it. Girl, it don't matter. Pirelli tires, honey. Yo, Tia is a savage with the slander. Tia went crazy. Tia versus, versus Kaya would be a vicious battle. The fact that he, the fact that she, she's sitting there looking like everything she's saying, right? Tia don't stutter. And and nothing she know how to put some words together. She lost me at Sister Locks or Nigga Locks, baby. That's when she lost me. Is them Sister Locks or Nigga Locks? Girl, that was hilarious. If y'all haven't gone, if y'all, I don't even know if you could hear what if they were saying because they was they was going back and forth. But then at one point, Netta was like. See, I thought you was going to come down here and talk like you had some sense, you bald-headed bitch. That's what she said to Tia. Girl, no. No. Mm-mm. Girl, it's 16,000 comments on this damn post. Tia's mouth is lethal. Brisket. <laughs> Brisket back is nasty work. <laughs> don't, Charles. Charles, don't you run, boy. Not too much on my eye, girl, Miss Netta. You was cool when when we left the set. Don't let these fans get get your jock strap in a bunch, baby. Cantaloupe face is diabolical, but the accuracy is impeccable. First of all, 
You look like you got on a wetsuit. It's crazy as hell. <laughs> Girl, that when, when I tell you it's the accuracy, that is what makes shit funny as hell because it's like you look at it and you can't deny it. it's the accuracy for me. It's the accuracy for me. Okay, what else is going on? Let's see. It says Sean Combe allegedly paid $1 million to have Tupac killed as, as his name appears 77 times in murder documents. And we begin with that breaking news at the top of this hour. New court documents show that Dwayne Keefe D. Davis accused hip-hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs of paying $1 million for the killing of rap icon Tupac Shakur. According to the court documents, Davis claims Combs paid Eric Von Martin the money. He also says that Combs offered to set up a phone call with Terrence Brown, who was the driver of the car that rolled up next to Shakur and Suge Knight on September 7, 1996, near the Strip. Now, Davis says that he was telling on himself and not trying to provide evidence against anyone else. He's accused of orchestrating the plot to kill Shakur. A trial date has been set now for some time in November. We'll get... Let me tell you something. This is the age. This is the age of truth. This is like you. It. Some things you just have to wait for things to just come out. What is it? The truth will see the light. It will see the light. The truth will see the light sooner or later. It will see the light. I want to read some comments. Seventy-seven times. Let's read the caption first. It looks like Sean Combs has been mentioned in a court documents related to the investigation into the murder of late rapper Tupac Shakur. According to the Daily Mail, the legal papers are linked to the trial of Dwayne Keefe D. Davis, a 61-year-old man charged with orchestrating the fatal drive-by shooting of Shakur in Las Vegas in 1996. I will never, when I tell you, I will never forget what was happening. I, don't, I will never forget where I was. I'll never forget when they announced it on the radio. It was Theo on 92.3 to beat. Theo. Remember Theo, y'all, with his deep, 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 deep voice? Asian dude with a deep, 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 deep voice. He announced it after he had been in the hospital. It had been seven days and he announced it. I, I will never forget it. I will never forget it. In, 20, in 2009, Davis, who was implicated in a planning, um, the shooting, in planning the shooting of Shakur, gave an interview to the Las Vegas police. In the interview, he insinuated that Sean Combs had paid a prominent drug dealer, Eric Von Martin, $1 million to Red Rum's Shakur. These remarks, mm -hmm, these remarks were recently referenced in a legal document filed to oppose his release on bail following his arrest in September on a first degree red rum charge. The news outlet also reported that the legal filings mentioned a total a Diddy a total of 77 times. Suggesting, let me tell you something. 77. Suggesting that Davis persistently alleged alleged that Diddy's involvement in the red rum of Tupac Shakur while Sean Combs has been repeatedly named in the legal documents, he is currently not a suspect in the case. It seems uncertain whether this status will change. Nevertheless, Davis's allegations against Diddy seems to be a significant obstacle to the release on bail. As prosecutors have cited this as a reason to keep him in custody. Absolutely. I really believe he turned Pac and Biggie against each other. He's the reason they're both dead. Yes. <laughs> yes. And the, I'm like, serial killer. We already knew this, and he killed Biggie and Kim Porter. What happens in the dark comes to light. 77 times. How y'all let one man run amok like this? What you mean? What you mean? He has money. What do you mean, how do you let him? You realize what people will allow somebody, what money will do, and who are afraid to even say anything? It's so ridiculous when people are being victimized by these wealthy people and y'all like, 
what's taking you so long to come out. These people have access to things like like to, to shit that you can only imagine and only see in a movie. Can you imagine going out to your goddamn car and it blowing up? What? What kind of what kind of shit is this? Am I being punked? No, this is real. So y'all go crazy for these rich people. Y'all love them. And when people have money, you tend to put a halo over them, the halo effect. Go look it up. And so people they get away with things. Isn't it ironic that wealthy people or people who have a little bit of money can get a, people who watch them, consumers, to give them money? It's so weird when I see like people give celebrities money. I, it's so weird to to see that happening. Every time I see it, like, why are you? Girl, people who have money, people who have acres of land and y'all in giving them money. And it's so weird to me. It is the weirdest thing. But people have this thing about people with money. They feel like if if I accept the things that they do somehow, some way that makes us relatable. And so I'm me and this wealthy person, we see each other, right? It's a programming. We can get back to this after November 5th. It's been 84 years. Tupac must want his justice. I mean, now is the time. Now is the hour, honestly. That's when things are, this is, it's time. It's time for like, and it's so beautiful that Cat Williams, in this particular collective of people, that Cat Williams frequency at the beginning of the year touched a collective consciousness of people that said it's up for everybody in 2024 truths are coming out people all of you big dick deviants meaning to me all of you low vibrating that's all y'all think about is fucking all y'all want all, that's how y'all use violence through sex just all you just Weirdo people. It's up for y'all. And these things, you're going to realize who the people are aligned to, right? What side are you going to be on? We don't care about the other side. What Cat Williams said in that interview with Shannon Sharp is so true. And for us to be in this age of information, age of knowing, you know, I'm we always, you know, I always looking at numbers and stuff like that. 77 times. I wonder if that's true. 77 times his name appears in that. There were so many sevens around Pac's death. So many sevens. So many sevens. You can go look it up. But the fact that it says 77 times, I don't know if that's just for show or, or what. Like, let's just say it was 77 times to give the people what they want. I don't know. But I look at things like that. I thought we knew this. Damn, Puff. Lord, between um, you think a nigga, you think what? You think the bay gonna let you disrespect Pac nigga? Oh, I'm like, what? Eminem said this already. I believe it. The real question is what really happened to the mysterious death of Kim Porter? And I remember somebody on Twitter, and I keep trying to find that tweet, and I'm trying to figure out the words that were used. I love, that's one, one thing that I love about Twitter is like, it literally keeps an archive. Somebody on Twitter said, y'all acting like are trying to imply that this man is a serial killer. And I said, yeah, Charles Manson never killed anyone. 
never was charged with himself killing someone. Did y'all know that? It was his ability to get other people like you need to be behind bars because if you can get people and talk people into doing this because you know people once again depending on the personality of the person people will listen to their own detriment to another person tell them what to do and will work for another person like a damn dummy with no brains and harm other people simply because somebody said to do it, convinced you to do it, put you in situations, giving them drugs, Charles Manson, giving them drugs, talking to them, make, having them believe in an altered state, having them believe that he's this second coming and he's going to, let me make sure this is on. He's going to, you know, start a race war, you know, Charles Manson story and all those people who died around him in proximity to him. He had something to do with that. I, I don't think that this is not the same thing. <laughs> I don't think that this is not what's happening here. I believe that this is what's happening here. Too many people around him have died there's too much death around him for him not to be a contributing factor in a, in some of them energetically giving um giving the word orchestrating paying for he has the money to do that and people will do for there are some people who are so weak that they will do the bidding for someone else. They will do the bidding for someone else while the other person sits back and, and have success. You're a little minion running around, putting bombs under people's cars, like what? And my, the crazy thing that I've always thought that this was crazy, that I felt like, men must respect violent men there must be a deep level of respect for violent men because if you are able to go out and harm other people for this person but you never think to turn around and neutralize the the person who is uh, causing chaos you must have you must be you must have a respect i don't understand how violent men if if there's these men are so good and there's these good men are around violent men are never neutralized and then when someone tries to neutralize them so many people come to their defense you're just trying to take a black man down girl what because all because of their their money, their fame, the lights that are shining on them. So all of those people that died around him, girl, it's insane. And then not, not just the people who have died around him, but the people who have experienced violence from him. And that's why I keep saying every woman, there are stories allegedly that he even has harmed his mother. So there's no, for me, when I see a man who harms everybody around, he doesn't, he doesn't discriminate. Men and women are harmed around this man and possibly children, right? So he's a threat to everyone he is in proximity to. And yet nobody thinks it's, probably best that we turn and neutralize the the threat because everybody's a witness in this shit everybody who has been in proximity he's hard the what we were talking about the editor at vibe danielle 
what he said to her. Oh, he'll, he'll have you in a trunk. All of these men and the violence that they inflict on other people, and it's allowed to ensue. He's Puffy has been terrorizing people for 30 years, harming people, taking money from people, doing terrible business deals, doing horrible business deals with people, these contracts, harming women, keeping enslaving, basically enslaving, having Cassie as a sex slave. Then people are dying around you. But then people are still, when he's out in Miami on jet ski, they're like, hey, pup, do you, what? So there are some people who don't have to do nothing, but because of how they project their charisma, their confidence, whatever it is, people are, people will do for them. They will do their bidding for them. So yes, yeah, serial killer, even though he has never harmed anyone, even the woman down at the club, New York, I saw him shoot me. I saw him. It's always been him. And that's all she's always said that she knew who it was. She saw him. So I feel like men are okay. They, they there has to be a level of respect because the same thing with Suge Knight, Marion Knight. This man terrorized. That's why when he's talking about Puff, nigga, you ain't no better. You right where you belong, motherfucker. You are right where you belong. You ain't no better, my nigga. But no one was scared enough of him and, and, and stood by and watched him inflict violence on people. No one thought in their mind, we might need to take this nigga out because he's really terrorizing us. He's terrorizing women, children. He's harming people. No, but it's that money. They got to keep that money going. They kind of got to keep the access to whatever the things, all the things, the material things. That's just the way it goes. And people will do for them. Can you imagine going out in your car? What, just because you're trying to talk to Cassie? He's nuts. That's why people wait until he's like, that's why people are coming out with their stories. Because now is the time. Now is the hour, girl. Now, is, now we can come out. That's why you have to strip those kind of people from their resources because it's because of their resources why people comply. It's because of their resources why people, I don't, like to me, I never understood why you, if you, if you have the opportunity to harm for him, why don't you take that ability and turn it around and neutralize the threat? If you know this person is harming people, why are you doing work for them? Why are you helping them? Why aren't you using that same energy to neutralize what you know is harming people? Unless you're in, a, or unless you're in alignment with that. And you have to be, because why would you do that for somebody? And, and then like, the money that you were given, is it gone? I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. It's been how many years? 30 years. I'm sure that money is gone. And then that, that man is gone. Those men are gone. Kim's gone. It's just like Craig, all of them, Black Rob, all of them. G is it, G, is G Depp still alive? Shit, I don't know. Girl. Heavy D. There are no coincidence, y'all. It's not. It really isn't. So that's the end of that. Okay, let's go to the Jasmine brand now that they're back in business. Congrats, Adele and Rich Paul reportedly engaged. Didn't she just say the other day she's taking a break? Let, let me tell you this story. Bookmark this and save it. Engaged, 
married, issues, divorce, divorce, babe, divorce. Be based on divorce, babe, divorce. Album. Okay, you got it? Right? Taking a break. Want to do some creative things, right? In my mind, creative things means creating a human being, right? Marriage. Baby comes. He starts acting weird. She's not putting up with his shit. And then she's going to give you an album. Hey, Siri, how old is Adele, the singer? Adele is 36 years old. Okay, about four years. And the album will be called 40. Okay. Mark my words. You heard it here? Okay. Because I can't ruin the fantasy. People are not, literally, people are not happy when you break up their fantasies. They want to be able to reside in some level of delusion, and they call it hope, but some level of delusion. And if you say anything that breaks that up, you're bitter, you're upset. Like, it's like, no, this is the truth of the matter. You don't want to hear the truth of the matter because it breaks up the idea of what you created in your mind. You created an idea in your mind. It's not, it's not clicking. When that happens, you reject that. When somebody comes into your fantasy and they're like, hey, it's not that you're like, no, 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 it is that, it is that, no, it is that, no, no, we have to have hope, we have to have hope. No. If you speak the truth inside of a fantasy, the matrix, the patrix, if you speak the truth and it breaks up the illusion of what's happening, it breaks up the social structure of whatever's happening, the way you're supposed to be. If it breaks that up, people are going to resist that because they are trying to conserve old ideas, old ways of thinking. Ironically, whether you're trying to conserve old ways of thinking, people still evolve. So you can, the train, baby, the train, I've, I've been saying this, the train is pulling up. The train is pulling up, my dear. So do you figure out what you want to do? Is you getting on the train? Are you staying in these old systems? Are you elevating? Are you ascending? Are you staying in these, oh, are you staying locked in a frequency that doesn't serve you, that causes you headaches every single day, that has an effect on your health? You want to be locked into that? Because somebody is coming down here and saying, ah, 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 you like, here she come. Yes, here I come. Breaking this shit up, shaking your shoulders. You like that, Erica? Stop shaking me! Stop shaking me! Well, wake up, girl! Don't nobody have time for that at all. Nobody has time for that. She's gonna get married. Everybody's in the comments. Love wins. Hashtag love wins. Okay, I'm telling you, and you and. Nobody like, ooh, that's bitter to say that. That's so cynical. Well, that's what it is. If the if if what I'm saying breaks up the idea of something, you already saying they're gonna get a divorce. Well, I'm just going by stats. And I'm going by behaviors that I've observed and witnessed myself. I've read studies, I've seen it happen. And so I'm just going, I'm just going by, no, but you're supposed to, you're not supposed to say that. You're supposed to have hope. Okay, well, hope is getting a lot of y'all in looking crazy. And um, looking for a unicorn, right? You in the desert, 
looking for a unicorn. Staff and rod with your canteen. There's a mirage up ahead. You die in a thirst. You pour your canteen. It's just one little boop, drop. You thirsty as fuck. Trek in the tundra. Every time I say trek in the tundra, I think of um, Jodeci. Baby, I'm begging, baby, I'm begging, begging, baby. Yeah, <laughs> several days in the desert. Baby, I would cry for you tonight. Yes, that's what they in the desert begging. That's how y'all look. Looking for these unicorns, trekking the tundra, mad as hell because you can't find it. Mad, wanting them to get it together. Keep over and over, trying to do it over and over. It doesn't matter what the stats say. You have hope that you're going to be different. You're hoping that this is going to be different. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. That's what I'm saying. For some people, it's just like, oh, you know, they have a list of things that they want to do in their life, right? Because this is a life experience here, right? Do the, whatever, it is, whatever it is that you want to do, do it. Right. You want to get married? You want to try and see like, I'm going to try. Let me do it. For I, I know it's probably not going to last no more than 10 years. Shit. Shit. You might be the one to be like, hey, this person is kind of cool. I can I can rock with you for another like licenses. Marriage licenses should have a term on them. Just like every like a passport, like a driver's license, like 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 a massage therapist license, like a fucking uh, what do you call it? Cosmetologist license. Don't they expire? You got to get go get some more hours. You every fucking three years, every five years, shit expires. Marriage licenses should do the same thing. Yep, you all want to renew your license after five years? We know these motherfucking marriages aren't making it to eight, right? On an average. So at five years, you get a term. You can. How long do you y'all want to buy this license for? Five years. Come back in five years. If in five years you want to renew the license, you can. If not, you don't have to. That's it. It should really be an expiration date on marriage licenses or yeah, an expiration date on marriage licenses. I think so. New album coming in four years. So congratulations. Let's read some of the comments. Let's see. I thought they were already met married. Congrats. Imagine marrying Adele. I'm confused. Adele forcing it real bad. Prayers. Ray, wait, I thought they were married. I thought they were married. Am I tripping? I could have sworn they got engaged a couple years ago. Who cares? We're not invited to the wedding. She looks so pretty with no makeup, by the way. Slow news day. They've been engaged and some say already married. I want to go to the wedding. And then she tags Adele. I will bring a gift. I just know the food about to be banging. I thought they were married already. I don't see them lasting. Boo. Congratulations. Love them together. Congrats. About time. Did they confirm this? About time. They've been saying 50, 11 years. About time because he was dragging it out. Aren't they married though? Not a tabloid being the source. Right. Girl, the source of the information. According to the sun. Yep. All right, so let's see what else is happening. Girl, Macy Gray, girl, this headline is crazy as hell. This is from the Jasmine brand. Then we got to go. Macy Gray says she's she prefers cocaine and a couple of shots to unwind. <laughs> oh, speaking of unwinding, honey, I'm unwinding eyes, girl. We down here unwinding. Unwind, unwind your damn eyes, girl unwind your eyes i can't find my little my little thing my little thing i can't find it i don't know where it is i think it's probably in the kitchen because i was making my coffee coming from outside Singer Macy Gray has an interesting way to unwind. During Wednesday's premiere of Surreal Life via <laughs> Villa of Secrets on MTV, Gray said cocaine and a couple of shots is her preferred method of chilling. Edibles and pizza were also her ways of relaxing. The revelation came as the other castmates participate in a breathwork exercise, which Gray wasn't feeling. Somebody said her voice sounds like it. 
if you're surprised and you didn't grow up on her, she's more than just, I try to walk away, but still, but I stumble. <laughs> Once you read a certain age, ain't nobody got to lie. It is what it is. It's her life. Right, girl, whatever. That's what I do. Shit. What you going to do? You going to be mad? You going to be, you going to gasp? You going to clutch the pearls? Oh my God. She takes a couple of bumps. What she say? A couple of bumps. And so a couple, a oh, couple of shots and some cocaine, girl. Okay, Macy. That's hilarious. Somebody said her voice sound like it. You could tell. Ain't no way she made them hit sober. I knew she played that character in Training Day a little too good. Okay, there's no way people are surprised. She looks and acts apart and has been this way for years. Our elders used to hide it. Now they tell all the media. Man, I bet her cocaine stories are legendary. Right. Get, get damn Macy Gray on a damn podcast somewhere so she could tell her damn stories. I'm sure she got stories for days. Y'all always want to talk to these damn men. Talk to these ladies, these rock star women. Let's hear their stories. God, they can't tell their stories. She's a whore. She's a whore. Girl, they be so ready to call you a whore. For doing what they do, for just having sex. That's crazy. Whore! Having, doing drugs. Oh my God, she's a mother. Do you ever hear the, when these men are behaving badly, do you ever hear them be like, oh my God, he's a father. I cannot believe he's doing this or he's acting like this. I can't believe it. He's a father. Nobody say that. Nobody, nobody be saying that. Um, it says Koyla Ray says everybody is slimming down after she was previously bullied for being skinny. Girl, let me tell you something. Body trends are historical. And unfortunately, I say it all the time. Unfortunately, the girls go and lay on tables. I said it yesterday about Iggy Azalea. Unfortunately, we live in a system where when there are some women who women, there are some women who whatever a man desires, they will morph into that woman for them. And now that cosmetic enhancements and surgery is, is more accessible for the average girl they are seeing what the men like centering the lens of what the man likes and changing their body in order to be what the man likes but where the girls mess up they forget that people change their minds people like what they like for how long they like it and men are fickle just like women people are fickle and we have a right at any time to change our mind Unfortunately, because the girl's eyes are wound up, they go and lay on these tables to be more desirable for men. Yes, they do. But they don't have the money to take it out when the men are now saying, your asses look obnoxious. They're no longer aesthetically pleasing. It doesn't fit what we're, what we're going for. You've made a permanent decision. Shout out to Kay Michelle. She always says, if you got the money to put it in, you better have the money to take it out. Because not only to be able to take it out in case you have health issues, but because you lay, got your body filleted for a nigga, you might want to go and lay back on that table and get them asses reduced. Take the out of the diaper. Take it out. Take the diaper off and start looking aesthetic because that's what y'all gonna do but see y'all didn't think that far so you so focus on these niggas and thinking like them and following their lead right because they're your leaders and protectors and providers so you follow the lead of a person whose mind changes about five to seven years body trends have always existed big women used to be a sign of wealth honey i got food bitch you, you hungry ass skinny bitches that used to be now in, in, in this society, particularly in this country, that's not a sign of wealth. That's to me is a sign of something else. 
your environment choices and all the other things. But there used to be a time where, remember when it was, ooh, the, all the skinny girls, as girls were skinny on the runway, you know, models, heroin chic and all that shit. Yes, go back to the 90s and look at the music videos. Go look at the music videos and then look at the music videos now. You can see there are trends in the way people, their bodies. You if you go back, I was just thinking about um with Pharrell and Jay-Z. Go back and watch that video. I think Mimi is in that video, Lauren London is in that video, and Nick Cannon's baby mama is in that video. Go look at their bodies. Go look at the women who are cast for that video. Go look at their bodies. Fast forward, go to Tiger's video, any any one of Tiger's videos, and go look at his video. Or the Migos. Go look. Look at the bodies of the women. Look at the bodies. Remember Buffy the body? That's that's when the body start the body started changing, girl. The body started changing. The girls started getting their bodies done. People have it always body trends have always existed. Always existed. So you being skinny and people making fun, girl, you ain't got enough bones. On, and also, body trends are regional as well. Girl, the your body in California might, might you might be fine with the way that your body looks in California. You go to the South and then be might be like, girl, you you need to eat. Are you okay? Like, what's going on? Are you okay? Are you depressed? Girl, you so skinny. What's going on? But then some girls will be like, oh, girl, you so skinny. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So it 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 just depends. So it just depends. It just depends. What I say is to drop what everybody else thinks about your body, right? Uh, uh, untether from the need to feel like you need somebody externally telling you that your body looks okay. People can be big as hell and healthier than skinnier people can have have more endurance than thinner, skinnier people. I, every time the images just pop into my head, Lizzo, she be on stage twerking, breath control, playing the flute, all that big as hell. Sweetie, she on the damn stage twerking, eating McDonald's, twerking. She can't even get her feet off the ground. She want to she wanna make a nigga what? Shake that thing for her icy chain. She can't even get her feet off the ground. So none of that shit matters. Look at the people. They going down to the doctor to, so they can get a shot so they can be skinny for once in their life. They want to be able to be skinny and have this experience. Look at Oprah. Oprah's damn near 80 years old. <laughs> How old is that Oprah? 71, 72? How old is Oprah? She said she they want to they want to do they want to switch the body up. They want to lose the weight. Did you hear on um, New Jersey, Louis said to Teresa, oh, your ass is small. And then Melania said, don't tell her her ass is small. Let me tell you something. I remember, I'm old enough to remember not so long ago that if you told a non-black woman that her ass was fat, she'd be ready to jump off a motherfucking building, bitch. What? What? If you told her that her ass was big, mm -mm, she wouldn't have it. She wouldn't have it. Nope. She'd be ready to tear the damn town up. I'm old enough to remember that. Now you telling them your ass looks small. Don't tell her ass is small. Don't say that. Now they want big asses. Why? 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 What would make you desire to have a big ass all of a sudden? Oh, is it the attention that you get? Look at what happened to the Kardashians. Look at the type of attention they got. They got their bodies altered. Look at what they attracted. Hello? Oh, I got to go. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. I got to go. I, I just got comfortable, honey. I was about to go in on the girls running down the hall clanking.
they got their bodies done. They saw what it attracted. They was like, let me take these booties out. <laughs> Anyways, y'all take care of each other. Protect your energy. Peace. Happy Friday.